Hello again. Welcome back. Magical powers. We are now going to learn how to make our classes, the objects of our classes, behave just like the built-in classes. We do this with special methods. They're called special methods. Kind of a hard thing to look up because it's such a generic word. But we already know one. Whenever we did the magic initializer, that is a special method. It caused the interpreter to do a special thing at instantiation. It went and found that magic initializer. Well, there's a lot of special methods available to you so that objects of your class know how to use the built-in things. We'll look first at the magic string. Here it is on line 19, double underscore str double underscore. This is the second most important piece of magic you'll be using. It gets called by the interpreter whenever you have your object in curly braces in an F string. Automatically, the interpreter will go and find your magic string, which must return a string, and that's the string that is replaced. If you use the format, it also will call your magic string. If you do the percent %s style of formatting, again, it is the magic string. When you do an str of your object, you get returned the return value of your magic string. And when you print your object, the interpreter runs your object through its magic string and prints that. Now, this is a good one to hold in mind. You don't want to do a string of your object and print it. That'll work just fine, but you are wasting the interpreter's time and your reader's thoughts. We will be inheriting from the stack class that we made back in Lab 320. Here it is over here. There is nothing new in our printable stack except the magic string. We are inheriting stackdef.stack because we rename that module to be stackdef so it looks nice in our code. So everything works the same except here when any of the string making facilities is called, this happens. And I'll leave it to you to figure out what it is. It just makes a pretty diagram of what's in your stack. First, I warn you that printing a stack is not pleasant because we didn't make a magic string. However, there is a default magic string. So here we'll make a plain box, we'll call it our stack that we instantiated, and we'll print it. We see back here there is no magic string, yet we got a printout. This printout looks like this. Everything that is known about that object is given to us right there. Where it is, where it was instantiated, and where it is in memory, which we don't care about. But when we make a printable stack and we print it, it looks like that. It's an emptiness. We're going through this loop and we're pushing in some bread first and then we print it. Now it has bread in it. Then we're going to push in mayo and then cheese and print it each time. And we see that happening. Now we start popping them back out, and the stack goes down. So, well, that's a pretty fancy magic string, but it shows what we're up to. I like to show you the definition of a circle class. A circle class, the objects are just like lists, except when we get to the end of the list, we go back to the front when we're indexing. So we index 0, 1, 2, ooh, at the end we go back to the 0 with. One, two, three. At the end, we go back to the zeroth. Okay, let's look at our instantiator for our circle. Some data comes in and a number that is the times. How many times we're going to go around in that circle before we say, hey, that's enough. So here are the data. We just store them and how many times we're going to go around. Now then, on line 29 is our instantiation step. We're sticking in a string, which is nice data for going around and around. 
any sequence is good for this. And we're going to go around exactly three times. What we are providing here is a magic get item. Magic get item gets called when there are square brackets and an integer after an object of your class. So this is a good thing to do on your container classes so that you can go through them one at a time. When I call circle square brackets i, what the interpreter does is it goes into the circle class and calls my magic get item where the first argument is the circle, the self, and the second one is the i that was given. Okay, here, let's see what we do. I'll take the len of the circle so that I can calculate that if the i is more than three times around that circle, I'm going to raise an index error just like an index error is raised on a list. Otherwise, I will return the datum that is at the module of the length. However, when I did this, the interpreter complained that it has no idea what to do about len because I have not defined a len. So, okay, I'll do a magic len, and then when this len gets called, this len gets called. We'll demonstrate how this works then. On line 29, as we mentioned before, we made our circle object. We are going to make an I that starts at zero and goes up to three times around our circle, the len of circle, which is the len of the data, that magic land got called there, plus one. So there will be one too many eyes. We will try to print the circle. Now we have the square brackets. And here we're going to print the I, zero, the first time, and a field of width of two. And here we are calling circle of I. We see here we have that output. Circle of zero equals A. One is R. Around, around, around. And then it's going to say circle or ob object goes around three times because when the I grew to be too large, this error happened, index error, that we raised in our class ourselves. We are naming it info, what came out of it, and we're going to print that info, and that info says circle object goes around three times. We're going to try it with sorted. We'll do sorted to circle. Remember that sorted returns a list sorted. And look what we got. A, 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 D, D, D. So it got sorted just by making the magic get item. Here I want to put it in a for loop. So I'm going to make a small circle. It only goes around two times and it only has two elements that are repeated. So we have XO, and that will call the magic get item. We'll get the I and the element of I every time. So let's look at our small circle. It went 0, 1, 2, 3, and so that worked. Well, okay, the hardest thing is nested loops to implement the magic get item. Make sure that it happened correctly, which is, wouldn't be our fault if it didn't, but of course it does. We're going to enumerate the small circle, and we're going to nest in there another enumeration of a small circle. So I will be 0 with the first element, and J then will run through all the elements, of which there are two. So we see I, J, and what we got. And it worked perfectly. So that is the magic get item. Okay, you're on for an exercise. Please do the number one so that you get the idea. And from now on, you'll always be making magic strings. Also, you have an optional project to make a tree program that will output a directory structure. This is hard, but give it a little shot if you have the time, and maybe you'll enjoy the solution. Okay, I'll see you when you're done.